Welcome to Small Girl Big Talk, where we talk about all the important stuff in adulthood, like relationships, self-identity, money, health, and all the other important things that you care about. I'm your host, Wendy, and my hope for this podcast is really for it to bring comfort and help you to feel a little bit less alone in your adulthood journey. You know how when you want to do something that is out of your comfort zone, you kind of have this procrastination where you just keep delaying and delaying that thing in hopes that you don't need to do it. That is my relationship with this podcast episode about depression. Now, even before I started this podcast, I already knew that depression is one of the topics that I want to cover. And that is because I personally has been through that. And I also know that this is one of the callings I have in life where I was pretty gifted in my communication skills and I also went through this experience and I want to be the voice for those who are struggling and I want to create mental health awareness. But at the same time, it has also been four years since I've recovered from depression and to be honest, I felt a little bit detached from the experience to the point where I felt like I might not be the right person to be talking about this. And on the other hand, I also knew that if I want to talk about this, I would need to relive my experience as someone who was going through depression. And to be honest, I am just quite afraid of what's to come when I try to bring myself into this zone again. So I actually prepared tissue papers in case I break tears as well. But I do want to talk about this because recently... There's just been too many suicide cases of people who seem to be very vibrant on the outside, but was really struggling on the inside mentally. And it breaks me to, to see that these people weren't able to fight the voices in their head and they gave up. <sighs> wow. <laughs> My tears are already coming out. Wow. <laughs> And this is something that is very personal to me because I used to be one of them. So this is a trigger warning um, that I will be talking about suicide as well. So if this is something that might give you some trigger, this is your point to pause here, okay? But anyway, so I was saying that I used to be one of them. I have always been very bubbly on the outside. I just have a very extroverted personality that whenever I see people, I feel very comfortable. So it's very easy for me to hide my struggles on the inside. And so I felt like it's so important for me to also be talking about this because we don't know who is going to be struggling next time as well, right? And how I'll be structuring this podcast, it's... Okay, let me calm down for a little bit. So how I'm going to approach this topic today is I will be sharing with you my personal story and my personal experience in dealing with depression and how I overcame it. I won't be covering like the symptoms of depressions in general because I feel like that is something that you can Google and learn more yourself. I also want to mention that I am not a certified medical professional. That's why I want to do it in my personal way. I just want to tell you my story. You can treat it as if you are listening to a friend or a sister telling her story. That's it. I just hope that by sharing my story, by sharing how things were for me, that number one, you can feel less alone. And number two, that you can kind of understand how it's like for someone who is struggling and possibly suggest some help for those who might need it. Okay, so I'm going to be sharing my story. This episode is kind of free flow, so I really hope that my mind is quite clear to go in a straight flow where you can follow, but I do have a little bit notes to guide me. I kind of reflected on my depression experience last night. I struggled with depression for about four to five years, and between that, there were three major episodes that I went through. And my very first episode happened in the summer of 2014, when I was still a student in Canada. And I remember that at that point, I actually did not know that I was going through a depression. 
The number one thing that people often ask when I mention that I have depression is always why. Like you are always so bubbly on the outside, you seem to have it all. Why? And depression can be caused by many reasons for a lot of people. And most of the times when you're going through, you don't even know the reason why you're going through depression. But for me, I do have a very clear starting point. And that was because I went through a traumatic incident on my 21st birthday. I am not ready to share about the full story today, but long story short is I went through a sexual assault. So my mental health story is kind of a blend of PTSD, which is short for post-traumatic stress disorder and depression. But for the sake of this podcast, I'll only be focusing on depression today. And I can tell you that my depression didn't happen immediately after the incident. Because I think at that point, I was just in a survivor mode that I was just trying to get through life and run away from the space where I felt that I was in danger. My first depression happened about a few months after that, when I thought that I was finally safe from the environment, but I got triggered about the incident. I remember during that season, I was really upset. I felt very like low energy. I was still going through school at that time. I was doing summer school. I was taking two courses But because it is summer, so most of my friends were still not in town. And I was living in this subletted place by myself. And so it was very easy for me to just avoid everybody, to just spend time by myself, not talk to anybody, not eat and all that stuff. And I remember I was just not eating much. I was just drowned in very negative thoughts. Because when it comes to such incidents, there is always a lot of self-victimizing and self-hating and self-blaming. And I was going through all of those thoughts. And that was also the first time that I had a little bit of suicidal thoughts as well. When I was taking a bath in a bathtub, I wondered if I can drown myself. Or when I was standing beside the window and I wondered if I should just jump and the pain would be gone. And... When I had these thoughts, I would then remind myself like, hey, my friends love me. Why do I want to do this? I'm such a selfish person. And then I hated myself even more for having these thoughts. And because I hated myself even more, then the thought of feeling like my life is not worth living is stronger. So suicidal thoughts are always a very vicious cycle, especially for those who are struggling. And that's why I wanted to share about this because I felt like people always think that suicidal people are selfish, but no, they know that you guys care, but they just couldn't get themselves out of those thoughts, right? But anyways, that was my first time having suicidal thoughts and my first time going through depression and I I didn't even know it was depression. And I actually had to go to the sexual assault center in my university to tell them like, hey, I'm going through this. I don't think it's your area of expertise, but can you guide me to the right person? And that was when I was actually referred to the counseling department in my university, which was very helpful in terms of helping me to navigate what were my next steps at that point. So like I said, I was doing summer school at that time and I actually got a letter from my counselor to get permission from my academic advisor to defer my exam to the next semester. So I didn't need to go through the stress of the exams and I can focus on getting better. And I was very, very lucky that my first episode happened when I was living in Canada, where in this country, they actually take mental illnesses very seriously and they really cared about us. When I gave that letter to my academic advisor, No questions asked, I was able to defer my exam immediately. So from there on, I think because they also took away the pressure of my exams and I was advised to talk to my friend about the incident and all that stuff, which was a step for me to get out of the space that I was in, right? So 
after talking to people, after going out there to socialize and not having the pressure of studies and all that stuff, I got better. And that was the end of my first episode until the second episode happened about, let's see, less than a year after that in March 2015 when I was again triggered about the incident. So you would notice that in the first episode, there was no actual treatment. There was no actually closure for myself about the incident. I just kind of got some help along the way and I thought that it was over. But hell no, that was just the beginning, right? And in this second episode, I was triggered about the incident and the suicidal thought came back a lot stronger. I remember having oh, this this okay this is dark okay you guys are going to judge me for this but I wanted to be transparent about what happened and if you are listening right now just remember that I am at a space where I feel very safe and I'm not doing anything as dark and as negative as this okay I remember sitting in McDonald's in my university by myself and I opened my laptop and I started researching about the least painful way to kill myself. And I think the answer was like some sort of gas, like nitrogen something. And I was actually already searching about where to get it. And I remember sitting there observing this table next to me where there were a few university students talking about life and like laughing and stuff. And I was like, wow, what I'm doing is pretty messed up. And I remember just closing my laptop, crying on the bus right back home and ready to talk to my housemate about how I was feeling and how my mental state is just so bad. But I remember when I got back, she was actually in her bedroom with her boyfriend and they were laughing inside and I couldn't bring myself to bring up about my negative space. So I went into my room and I just cried and I stayed in that dark place and I think um, I think I just cried too much during that season that I have very bad migraine and every time I take painkillers, I felt like I should just take more and at one point, I do have a knife on my wrist. It was just a lot of pain. It was just dark. It was just ugly. But again, I felt like perhaps the angel spoke to me at that point. That every time that I'm very close to self-harming or hurting myself, I always had the strength to fight through those voices and not do it. And instead, I always had the courage to go seek help. So in this time around, I went back to the counseling in my university and I was referred to a psychologist. And this is when I was introduced to therapies. I can tell you, my experiences with therapists were not smooth. It is not easy to find a therapist that you feel like you can connect with. And even at that point, I did not like the therapist that I was seeing, but she did help me to gain some sort of closure about the whole sexual assault incident. And because of that closure, I got better from that episode. And then life went on till I actually graduated from university and moved back to my life in Malaysia. Adjusting my life back to Malaysia was kind of tough because I was living in a new city. I was suffering with reverse culture shock where... I was so used to my life in Canada and I really loved it there. I was going to go back there and I didn't have friends in my new city. My family was going through some stuff. There was just a lot going through in my life. And in January 2017, remember I told you guys that my sexual assault happened on my 21st birthday? My birthdays ended up becoming anniversary of this really terrible incident. And I remember that on my birthday in 2017, I started wondering like, why is that thought and that fear and that negative feeling is just still following me even years after the incident? And I would say that that was kind of the beginning 
of the worst episode I had because I kind of drowned myself in a negative thought. And because of my environment, I didn't really have strong support system. I was going through a lot. I struggled with depression for about two months. I tried to do everything that I learned from my previous therapies. I tried to meditate. I tried to yoga. I tried to go out with my friends. And I remember that at one point, I was out in a mama with my friends. Like on the surface, my life was supposed to be okay. But on the inside, I remember just feeling so empty. Like, almost like there's a hole in my heart. And I knew that that depression feeling is just, it's there to stay. And it was very bad. Okay, for those of you who are wondering how was how is depression like, for me personally, depression wasn't extreme sadness, but it's the absence of emotion. It's almost like you are so sad or whatever to the point that all the joy is sucked out of your soul, that you feel like you're just an empty vessel walking on the street and there is no point living. That was how depression was like for me. And in this episode that happened in 2017, I experienced it bad. It was so bad that going to work on weekdays were the only reason that I was living for. I would just drag myself to work, try to put on a positive run for people, do my work and go home and lie on my bed. Sometimes I would just have takeouts on my bed and I throw the food boxes beside my bed. I remember that at one point, my laundry was just all piled up because I didn't have the energy to do my laundry. And I'm pretty sure there were cockroaches in my room. That was disgusting. But I, it was a phase, okay? It, I went through that. It was very ugly. And it's the worst that it's been. Like, I wasn't really suicidal this time around. But my life was all messed up. And I didn't feel the need to get intervention until I started to not perform at my work. I think my manager asked to meet up with me and told me that I wasn't performing. And as someone who has always been a top performer in my life, it is very easy for me to see that I'm not performing in my usual ways. Like I knew that I can do better, but I just kind of couldn't do it. Like I knew I could, but I couldn't. It was a struggle. And it was, it was very bad. But at the same time, because I just moved back to this new country, because I am starting my adult life, I didn't have that much money. One of my biggest concerns on getting help is actually like psychologists are expensive in Malaysia. I cannot afford it. That was literally my thought, okay? But um, at one point when I felt so, so, so bad as if like, there is no more light at the end of the tunnel. Like, my life is going to end, even though I'm still breathing on the outside. And I was really afraid. And I texted my sister about it. I told her, like, I, I really don't know how to get help. And my sister texted her friends who are doctors. And they actually told her that, hey, with the Malaysian public health system, you can actually get treatment for a pretty affordable rate. And they told me how to do it. You know, if you are listening to this and you live in Malaysia, text me on Instagram at smallgirlbigtalk and I can guide you through that process. It is very, very fucking affordable, okay? And that was how I got help on my third episode where I actually got referred to a psychiatric ward and I got antidepressants. I think at that point, because I felt like I tried everything from the things that I learned in my therapies, I, you know, tried to meditate, tried to read books, tried to pray, tried to exercise to boost my endorphins and whatnot. I felt like it wasn't enough. So I decided that I want to try to use antidepressants to treat the chemicals in my brain. And it was quite a steep curve that at the start of it, the side effects 
from the medications actually made the depression worse because I was feeling nauseous. I was feeling very sleepy all the time. I was sweating a lot. Like the side effects different for everybody. And at that point, I was going through all these things. And on top of that, I was already feeling shitty. So it was terrible. But I was preempted by my psychiatrist that this might happen and I just need to be patient to let the side effect kind of wear off. And it did. It got better. I tweaked my medication. I changed my dosages. I changed different medications. And eventually, I found a formula that worked for me. This time around, I also decided to come clean with my parents. Even though I can never tell them up till today about the sexual assault incident, I decided then that they deserved to know that I was going through depression. And as an Asian family, I thought that my parents might say that I was overthinking things, that they didn't take my depression seriously. But to my surprise, both my parents were so understanding. And my dad was the one who told me like, if you're not happy right now, you can just quit your job and come home. And we'll we'll take care of everything. Don't worry so much. And I'm telling you, my dad told me that when they were going through some sort of financial struggles. And that was beautiful because that's when I knew that my parents don't care if I'm not making money and they are struggling. They just want me to be happy. (laughs) Funny, right? That we were so worried about all these things that they might say. But... All they did was just love me. So I actually took a mental health break during that time where I kind of went into a self-discovery mode in my life. And um, I will talk more about it in my next episode. I feel like this podcast is not only getting long, I feel like my mind is also quite scattered. Um, But I hope that it gives you an idea that Depression is not a one-time thing. It can come back to haunt you again, even though you felt like you are free from it. And there are multiple treatments that you can get for depression. You will need to take time to slowly explore all these different options that you have. And it works differently from everybody. But the key is this, that it is possible to get out of it. To be completely honest, I tried recording this podcast multiple times by now because it scares me to be talking about all this and I don't know if my stories even made sense to you and if you even find it helpful. But I hope that this very messy introductory episode about depression would be the start of our conversation about this topic. I want to encourage you to private message me on Instagram with your questions if you have any questions and I hope that I would be able to structure my thoughts and the ideas better in my next one. I'm sorry that I'm ending this in a very brief and negative note. I'll try my best again next month, okay?